Patriotic Dragon Radio Show, a show to bring honest, open, thoughtful conversation back, ideas and opinions from and to our community about topics from across the spectrum, allowing groups and individuals to be a part of the process for a brighter, better future. We want to educate, inform, and inspire. Uh, discussions, opinions, and views expressed during the show are those of the guest and not necessarily that those of the Pickens County GOP, WYYZ, or the sponsor. The sponsor this month is Aspire to Inspire Before You Expire.com, a website dedicated to the idea that we are all aspire to be more than we are, we are all inspired by something or someone, and we all have time to make to matter now. Please join us with your stories of aspirations, inspirations for today. Uh, before we get started, I want to just run off some, some dates that we've got coming up. Uh, dates to announce, obviously, November 3rd, the city of Jasper. Uh, go and vote if you haven't already voted, which a couple of the people here at the table are wearing their nice peachy shirt. I like that. I like that. Uh, Saturday, November 7th, uh, Jeff Dobson Auctions on Highway 5 South of the Take 4 Way will be having a, a gun auction. Uh, come check out the antiques, the new and the state sets that uh, Jeff and Jill will be uh, auctioning off. We've got a tremendous amount of weaponry. Uh, we'll be selling tickets to our Second Amendment gun raffle and rally that Saturday at Jeff Dobson. Uh, so please come out, enjoy the auction, and, and buy your tickets for our Second Amendment rally. Uh, then Monday, December 7th, here at Rocco's, first annual Second Amendment gun raffle and rally with the Pickens County 4-H shotgun team and Georgia Conceal Organization will be here as our guest for the raffle and uh, the rally. And then the next thing, Saturday, February 27, 2016, the Sock Hops, a group out of Marietta, will be with us at 7 p.m. that Saturday at Chattahoochee Tech. Come dance to music from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and enjoy an evening with friends. Tickets will be available January at the Pickens GOP website. All right, I'd like to welcome my, my panelists this week from left to right, uh, Bill Cagle. Thanks for having, having on, being on us. All right, David Leister. Thank you. Glad you could make it. Craig Stallings, good to see you, good to see you. And uh, Stephen, the man who oh, got to vote today. <laughs> <laughs> Good with those sunglasses. And Jim Harris to my it's right. A pleasure. You, you got your yard work done. That's that's, that's it's a pleasure. All right. Uh, I want to open the show with uh, a statement. We had invited uh, Kirk Raphael, who is running for City of Jasper City Council. Uh, because of his travel plans, Kirk was unavailable to, to be here tonight. Uh, go to his website. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a bunch of red lights to be here and there, but uh, we hope that uh, Kurt uh, will, uh, or Kirk will, uh, do well in the election and uh, make some needed changes at the city of Jasper level, which we are still going to discuss with fervor tonight. Uh, and then the other thing that we are going to talk about on the, the local level is our East Blast uh, as well. Um, so I will. Uh, I want to go to my, from right around to around the table that way, uh, since Jim, you had uh, had some some what appears now in writing to be correct uh, anticipation and issues with East Plus. I'd like to open that up to you immediately. Well, I I have the same issue, and that is let's stop having bonds to pay for bonds to pay for bonds, and nothing ever gets paid off. And who's spending the money anyhow? Who, you know, where's it going? I have yet to see a plan of any kind. Well, they got some beautiful plans for that in middle school. Don't, don't know where they're going to build it, but they <laughs> see, give them the money, they'll figure that out. There's got to be some rule change to where when you have a bond, you pay that bond off, we'll give you some more money. But don't do it with an East Boss. That's just a waste of your money and my money. Yep. Steven? Oh, well, um, if we're talking about East Boss, so you'll have to forgive me because. Uh, you got a bill of crowd here tonight, so I'm going to be talking. Um, but if we're talking about the East Blots, I do have my, uh, my fancy schmancy uh, uh, peach uh, I voted uh, sticker today. 
Um, and I simply took the position of, if you're going to back me into a corner, to ask me if I want a taxi freeze. It's clearly no. All right. Yeah. Once again, I, uh, I keep my, my streak intact. <laughs> you're bucking the establishment. Good job. Good job. Yeah, that's, that's bucking. Anyway, um, you know, I read today that uh, our Pickens Chamber of Commerce is actually advertising for the East Lost. Uh, so apparently there's some, uh, there's some uh, influence there. But uh, I personally would like to see our school system audited and not for, yeah, we spent this much money. I want to know where did it go, who did it go to, why did it go? and why did it go there. So um, why, 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 why? before we give you anything else, we need to make that gum sure that we're, where it's going is where it's supposed to go. Mr. Leister, sir. I'm afraid I agree with you entirely. Wow, that's a I first. can't add anything to it. it uh, it's <laughs> just, you know. We don't need more taxes. We need what we already tax collected, and we need what they're spending it on documented. So. I agree that, and I did over the previous uh, three comments before we came to here. Uh, like we discussed last week, for $12,000, we can all send our kids to a top-notch private school and get a much better education for our kids. You can even send your kids to a moderate tiered uh, private school and get a better education for less money than that. Um, so it's, it's taxation, I'm not voting for it. Um, but I would like, before you ask me for a, more money, show me accountability. Yeah, that's the problem from state or local state and national levels. There is no accountability. And when people demand accountability, they're demagogued by someone, the media, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, the pro-tax crowds, the whatever. Hey, show me some accountability. Explain to me why you need it. Right. And and my 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 main issue with it, obviously, is what's in the in the paper today and what uh, what uh, was brought up before uh, by Jim and is laid out. And the the gap in the plan is that up to twenty million dollars can be utilized for whatever the Board of Education deems to be necessary. That's not a plan. There needs to be a defined budget with a cap on what the East Plus would be, and at that point, the East Plus goes away, not open-ended, and definitely not without a, a budget up front that every citizen in the county that wants to look at it, review it, and make commentary on how the money's going to be spent, how that's done. So uh, I will be voting early on it, and my vote will be no. Not at this point. Don't, uh, don't need to continue it. We need to have a plan. All right. Great. And you, since this is radio, you really can't see this, but <laughs> right here I have it on Facebook. Pickens County Chamber stands behind Education Splost. So they're saying yes to East Splost. And I think they're a little bit misguided there, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Well, uh, I, Craig, I think I know you're a member. I'm a member. I am. Uh, I didn't remember having that in a conversation at any chamber breakfast or anything that uh, I've been to. I would like to ask anyone on the Chamber of Commerce, are they even aware of this $20 million? Or did they even read the, the yeah. bill or the, the, to, the uh, amendment and find out what's in it before they went ahead and automatically started well. supporting it? You know, Harry, Harry, Harry Reid and Nancy Pelosi might have written this one. you got to pass it to know what's in it. I guess they started a, press, a new precedent. This is, it is a precedent, well, new precedent it, for the chamber to endorse. It could uh, be because spots. Max Kaler has uh, got his own Pickens County Just for Kids Committee, and, you know, he was on the board, I believe. Yeah, 
He's on yeah. the board and on also the political uh, on the political committee and stuff for the chamber as well. So, okay. you know, I got a lot of respect for Max. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but, yeah. however, yeah, open conversation is what needs to be given when you're spending other people's money. You bet. All right. I think we're. I think we have a consensus on these plus from here. Yep. Um, now I'd like to move into the the other things that we were talking about for the the local area, which is plans and funds for the infra infrastructure improvements, specifically for the city of Jasper, um, and also growth plans for the tax base increase. Uh, my my two elements of that is: do we keep annexing county property into the city? and calling that expanding the city or do we have a city plan for downtown to expand the tax base that, that we should, the way we should be doing it. all right bill I'll, I'll go left to right this time um good choice go left good choice <laughs> i can't believe i'm on the left for, for once wow who, who would have thought but you're on the right of david well so, that's, you know. true. There we go. that's true that's <laughs> true oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Something a little hard to accomplish, really. I thought most people were, but I mean, you know, I'm kidding, David. I'm kidding. It's okay. I can't hear. <laughs> um, you know, I, I would like to see a city plan, um, a, a, you know, city plan, a comprehensive plan for downtown to, um, you know, I, I use the term loosely revitalize it. Downtown never has really diminished or died out the way a lot of other small downtown areas have done that have now been revitalized, but what they can do to grow it. And then, you know, of course, annexation, that's, I mean, yeah, that's a topic for discussion, but that that can happen regardless of what we discuss here or not. So, but I think the first thing is, obviously the easiest thing is to annex more property. I mean, that, that goes without saying, but I'd like to see a comprehensive plan long-term for, the city to, and, and not only for the city, but even the county to, to grow the tax base, bring in better business, which we've touched on in previous shows, bring, bring in businesses, uh, attract tourism and so forth. David? Well, Bill, they have a comprehensive plan. Every 10 years they develop a comprehensive plan. Uh, yeah, well. And every year they're capital improvements plan is supposed to be reflective of that. Um, certainly in 2007, they made the Georgia Trend Magazine where they explained how they were going to invite and develop the urban sprawl that was happening at that time. Uh, what, year, what year was that, David? 2007. 2007. Well, again, I, I'll say I claim that is as I made a statement in a letter uh, I recently wrote. That's empty rhetoric, as far as I'm concerned. Right. Well, you know, during that interview for that magazine, they talked about their water plan and how they joined with three other counties, what they were, how they were going to progress from that point, um, and. As you said, where are we now? Well, we're seven uh, and a half years in. I would hope we're pretty close to getting there if we have a 10-year plan. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, the, their budget is online, and you know, I've gone through it. I see one area for capital outlays where they have infrastructure, and for this budget year, they've budgeted $40,000. Woohoo! For the two prior years, they had Fixed nothing. Two potholes with that. <laughs> and what's the overall? Well, it what's it the is overall an election year, Dave. Small potholes, yeah. It is. It is an election year. <laughs> okay. Forty thousand. Yeah. That's true. Thanks for reminding me. I forgot. But about But you that. know, uh, <laughs> but considering how we got the the splos now that's paving roads, it's kind of hard to figure out. Is that forty thousand? You know, where's it coming from? Well, and, and I didn't, and I'll be honest, I did not go through the entire budget. Right. I did see where the um, the income from the water system is three hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and mm -hmm. the expenses that I looked at um, might have come up to, I'll be generous and say a hundred thousand dollars. So there is definitely Proceeds. a profit yeah. being made on that. And I'm not sure how they're reinvesting it. Certainly, you know, the, the mayor wants to 
satisfy his base and not raise his taxes as much as possible, and that could be used to offset, which is a good plan. But are we at the point where this money needs to be reinvested so that the system doesn't totally fail? Uh, is it in danger of totally failing? Uh, all of these things um, would really require some in-depth studying. But um, as as far as the as taxing and increasing everything, and until we really know where the money's going, we shouldn't say yes to anything extra. Amen to that. All right. And Craig? Well, you know, I think we're being short-sighted here because, after all, when that water park gets built, now, by golly, we're all going to have... We'll be, drinking dough, that, baby. we'll be drinking that free bubble up and eating that rainbow stew. <laughs> but... <laughs> Yum, yum. All joking a, aside. That is a city project. I forgot about that. That is a city project. Yeah, hello. So here's my question. Who benefits when the city annexes county property? No, I mean... has the right answer. He's got a knife. <coughs> I do. It's a little knife, but it's real sharp. Well, <laughs> it depends on do we... And, and they're the next point in our list... Do we have a uh, unified county? Do we have a athens Clark County scenario here? No. But, you know, uh, and I, I, I expect that I'll probably get at least nasty looks, if not shot at, but I have said for years that we ought to have that very thing because to maintain two police departments, two fire departments, absolutely insanity. So... Yeah. Um, we should have joined these a long, long time ago. Yep. Um, but like I said, I mean, what's the benefit? Because there's, there has to be a benefit to the people who are being annexed, and right now I don't see it. But it benefits the county, Craig. I guess I don't know the 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 property owners that's annexed. Okay, so you pick up maybe city sewer, maybe uh, water services, and city fire and police protection but you got that with county now so i mean it benefits the, the city i assume more so than it does the property well it increases their tax yeah, i was gonna say it increases their That's property true. taxes because now you're paying city and county taxes so so I'm, I'm thinking that us poor taxpayers are not benefiting from having been annexed they tried to annex us up in hunter's ridge we said i don't think so scooter no. <laughs> 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 steven steven well, I, I think y'all touched on, on two points. Uh, one is, is what are we doing to bring business in? But as I, as I have my little conversations with, with leadership, whether it be at the city level, at the county level, or even at the state level, um, there seems to be at each one of those levels uh, some uh, lack of communication or, or a disconnect, if you will. Um, so there's, sometimes there's some finger pointing, and, and I... This seriously uh, affects the leadership we have to be able to push these policies aside. So I think, David, you were right in the fact that um, are we looking at one of these situations where, um, yeah, occasionally a blind squirrel does find a nut every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Wonder. <laughs> so, um, but I, I think, uh, again, getting back to the two points, it's, it's the, the lack of business that we have and the the communication, the disconnect. Uh, and those are two serious things that we need to be looking at. Uh, we can kind of trudge through those and, and uh, have a positive positive outcome, um, then we can possibly answer some of these other questions. Jim? <laughs> the word infrastructure improvements means one thing to me, and that's roads. And after that comes services for buildings and construction and stuff like that. There Very softly spoken there, Jim. I'm <laughs> soft. Well, I'm, I just got done mowing two yards, so I'm kind of soft spoken. <laughs> Infrastructure. Yeah, I've, I've watched Church Street for the last month now. They did all the potholes again. Are they ever going to resurface the road? Or are they going to just keep resurfacing the potholes? They're practicing. 
Yeah. Yeah. That would be the to me that would be a key infrastructure right there because Church Street runs right through everything. Well, and I think the issue that's, may be that it's a state, the state road. road uh, I don't feet care. Feet so, the, I know. Uh, so, hey, so, I feel your pain so, there, buddy. But I, I think yeah. what they're doing is a state, it's a state the, road. The, yeah. the upside yeah. of that is the forty thousand dollars is not going to be used for that. <laughs> Well, if it's a state road, then what happens when a city is trying to grow and the state road is in the middle of their growth? How do you work that out? I think that's one of the things that goes back to uh, communication at all levels. Are we, uh, our local uh, leadership, are they talking to our state guys and our state guys talking to our local guys? Are they going to the, to the, the meetings that they need to be at? Are they going to the things that need, they need to be seen and heard? Um, or are we missing something? Well, I, I know I know for for certain uh, that the state DOT commissioner was here in the county about uh, two weeks ago. They had uh, Representative Jasper's, Representative Gooch, uh, were were with him with the DOT commissioner. They were at Rob Jones's office for a lengthy meeting, and then they actually hit all the cities as well, Hinton, Jasper, and all that. So he was they were here, and I'm sure that was a topic across the board. But so. Uh, they're they're having those meetings, but you know what's the outcome, and more importantly, what's the what's the plan? Well, I guess you know? it's a matter of quality over quantity. Then, how many times are we having those meetings, and what is the quality of those meetings? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the state looks at the roads, and they create a list of roads that they are going to repair or update. The local municipalities, the county does the same with the county roads, the cities do the same. And they, they've, they schedule these a year or two out, usually two years. So the road that they've repaired today is a road that they talked about two years ago. Right. That's how the system works. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it's a state road, the county or the city is not going to repair that because that money would come out of their budget for their roads. Yeah. So um, that's that's the way it works. This is how it is. Yeah. And I know that from experience. So. Are yeah. they still talking about extending 285 up and around to help with their traffic down in Atlanta? I haven't heard coming that. Coming through here? I haven't heard. No, the Northern Arc has, yeah. has, has basically been tabled. Yes. Uh, the, the Georgia 20 corridor is just being widened out now across the Chattahoochee River through Forsyth uh -huh. uh, and, and those counties. That is that is going to be that primary corridor. The the Northern Arc beyond that, is, it was tabled. Uh, just yeah, that's, too, far, far too, far too that's hard been, to make the really been mentioned in 20 years, the Northern Arc. So. Here's the reality, and I don't want to get too far uh, deep into the state issues, but... We have, uh, not too long ago, I was, I was in a meeting where we discussed uh, the transportation and 49% uh, almost half of our commercial traffic is running through Atlanta. Well, they're starting out in Savannah, a lot of those are. They're not wanting to go from, from coming to Dalton. That's not, the, that's not point A to point B. It's point A to point B is Savannah to, uh, to Chicago uh, or to New York. And so we have to be able to figure out how to divert that 49%, half a percent of commercial traffic away from Atlanta. Well, um, and some of those ideas uh, include uh, uh, Highway 27, which runs literally parallel uh, yeah. to the west side of uh, the, the Georgia line right. and bringing over 16 and, and so on and so forth. So um, I think those are... Those are the kind of steps we need to talk about if we're looking at the uh, 30,000 foot. They, they need to hurry up because projections estimate 70% of the growth or of greater metro Atlanta is going to be north of I-20. So we're right in this slap dab in the middle of it. Yeah. And, and I know from a state and a regional level that the Highway 411 corridor, that funding has been approved by the state DOT to take it from the 75 merge down in the uh, Cartersville branch of 411 and make it a divided four-lane highway all the way to up to where it would connect with the four-lane that's existing in Cleveland, Tennessee, which would take truck traffic off of I-75 corridor, yeah, past Chattanooga, Dalton, and, and let it merge on there. So, And that'll be good for those, those areas. And 
for the most part, I drive 411 to get to the area that I work. I was on it today, and on either side of it, primarily is older residential, not a lot of commercial, so it's a corridor that could be less expensively developed, right. and uh, hopefully that would divert some traffic. And it would be good for those counties. I know Winfield County is excited about having it cruise through there. And they could probably do the same thing on the east side, you know, 441, you know, from yep. Homer all the way down to... Yeah. And everybody I, uses 441 North yeah. uh, up to get in North Carolina, right. Asheville, that area already. And the so. easy part about the 411 corridor is that that land already is bought. Yep, it's yeah. already it, purchased. It is already there, yeah. and it's already been semi Four prepared. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot uh, of stretches that are already we're, divided. Where it's going to make, uh, from Chatsworth to the Tennessee line is where it's going to be the hardest part because that's the, that isn't as developed as it should be. Yeah, you got the carpet industry and all that. All right. All right. Well, now the we want to move on to the, the next topic, which is still local, and we touched on it. And in, um, this is just my view. It's nobody else's at this table, I don't think. But, uh, Bill, you've traveled around the state, and Craig, you do as far as business as well. Um, the idea of a consolidation of the cities and county governments. From my standpoint, after seeing and dealing with athens Clark County, Macon Bibb, Columbus, Muskogee, I've through business have dealt with those new consolidated governments and I dealt with the old divided city of Macon which was <laughs> archaic and couldn't get out of its own way and 70% of the population moved into Bibb County out of the city of Macon until the Braves left several other major things left there because they had no infrastructure support uh, now they've consolidated and Macon Bibb is, is Coming back, they're We're doing talking some, about trying to recruit a new minor league and, uh, baseball team, and they've got the the stadium to do it with, so, right? That we, that we all paid for, it. so the historic stadium with that. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, for me, when I look at the pros and cons, the, the if I take them down a sheet of paper and the right hand side's the pros, I run off the bottom before I, I finish out the pros. The cons, I can see four or five potential hazards, but those could be done in the planning stage. That's just my opinion, so I'll, I'll go back to, to, to Bill and go around the table this way. Bill? Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, you know, athens Clark County, um, make, making Bibb County, I've got a lot of customers. I've uh, been traveling those areas for all my work in life, and uh, most people you talk to, especially in Macon, Bibb County, they're saying it's been a great benefit to that community. Uh, consolidate for the, ex the exact reasons you mentioned. Um, so, I, it, it, and again, those are lo much larger areas than Pickens County, but Craig touched on it a moment ago. You, you have duplicity, we're a small county, you know, duplicity in police or emergency services, police, paramedic, fire, what have you. Surely, to goodness, that could be consolidated. Oh, yeah. And maybe a couple other departments could be consolidated, stream, streamline it to make it more efficient, more cost effective. And you know what? It would probably save and make those entities even more money by doing so. Well, and one of the, the biggest things when you look at those infrastructure costs with a consolidated government versus the individuals, and if you take a Muskogee or a Bib. And, and you look at what they've done in that larger scale, and we're smaller, of course, but when you start looking at ISO ratings yep. for businesses, you know, we've got volunteer fire departments who've just done extraordinary work for years, yep. and, you know, now they're, they're, they're paid departments, but every city still stands on its individual ISO rating for the households, their insurance ratings, that type of thing. But if you had a consolidated government, then ISO rating covers the entire region, the, 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 whole, the, whole, county. the whole county. That alone is tens of thousands of dollars in requirements and regulations that we have to update every single year with training and everything else. So, yeah, like I said, the, the, when you run the pros down one side of the sheet, they run off the bottom. So. Well, you know, you, you can have better overall, like we touched on a moment ago, planning, central planning and, and plans for growth that maybe have some teeth because hopefully there would be a little bit more accountability than... You know, for the people, the citizens, because you're only keeping track of the city, county, the city or the county or whoever versus the city water department, the county water department, this and that. So, you know, I, I think the pros definitely outweigh the cons, like, like you said, Will. 
Well, the horse is already dead, but let me just give one more hit in. Okay. <laughs> um, what you were talking about, the ISOs, is, is so very true. In the city of Nelson, our insurance rates are much lower because we're associated with ball ground. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's uh, a good place. Right. And the town of Talking Rock outsources their police department to the sheriff, which is something I looked at for Nelson at one point. Uh, all of these costs are so significant. And the cities, and they don't lose their accreditation. They don't move, lose their charter because they outsource. A, a city has to have three main services in order to be a city. And by combining it all, they can still be cities. Right. Uh, so, and the individuals, the police department, if they're all merged in with the sheriff's department, they don't lose their job. And that's something you have to think about. Mm -hmm. While we're saving money, we have to ensure that we're also saving jobs right. yeah. because they're in short supply. And, and give better opportunity for insurance, better job for training, right. better opportunity for retirement. If I were a Nelson police officer, I'd be worried about my retirement. You don't have a retirement. Like I said, no. if I were a Nelson police yeah. officer, I'd be looking yeah. south or I'd be looking north. So one, of the, uh, one of the things that I look at, and should, should we do a, uh, a consolidation, first thing we'd have to do is get all the uh, personalities out of the way. Is, uh, once you move the egos out of the way and you start looking for the best benefit for the county, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to measure, but it'd be, it would be wonderful. But a rising tide does lift all boats. So, you know, I can, I can, I could envision and see where we would all benefit from having a uh, consolidated police fire rescue. I just, it makes perfect sense. Mr. Stevie wonder. I, I can agree with the, uh, the emergency, um, response aspect of it. Um, so I was kind of listening to the, uh, the conversations, and I would I would agree probably 60-40 that uh, a lot of the times uh, we can be able to look at consolidating those, uh, those services, especially the emergency uh, side. Um, but also, you know, you, you look at other uh, other variables or other examples of life um, where uh, communities decided to take a different path. Um, for example. Um, there's a lot of uh, had this the same discussion down with uh, Peachtree City at once a point one point in time. They're having the same discussion with uh, Big Canoe uh, right now. Do they want to be incorporated or do they want to maintain their, their uh, privacy? Um, and so those are things that we have to be able to to, to look at. Um, so I, I, before before we get off because what I'm hearing over and over again is is that I mean, Craig you brought up probably the, the biggest point is that these emergency services I again wholeheartedly probably agree 60 40 percent of the time um, that those need to be um, those are the biggest aspects of, of merging um, a city and county together but outside of that I mean we could also look at uh, say if Tate Georgia wanted uh, take this same path. There's not a whole lot of people moving into Tate. There's, there's also not a whole lot of people moving into the Macon Bibb area. Now, has that changed over the past few years since they have uh, decided to go a little more consolidated? Possibly. But that's still not saying that that those are those are draw two areas for people looking to settle down, having that uh, white picket fence mm -hmm. kind of lifestyle, um, that suburban. Yeah. You know, I used to I used to see a Nelson police car once in a while come through our neighborhood. Now I see a county sheriff coming through our neighborhood at least twice a day. Right. So obviously that change has been made. Have they found you yet? No, they're still looking for me. <laughs> so do you live in we, Nelson? We won't tell them I live that you're in here. The, uh, Riverstone right there. Right, it's you don't live Tate. in Nelson. Uh, no, I know, but and that's, that's why it stopped. It, it, it stops <laughs> at, at the little coolie corner down there. Right. Where you 
But I, I just wondered if the fire station that was down the street in Tate is now just rescue service only. There's no fire service there anymore. All right. Who's covering the fire service in this area now? Pickens. Well, in Nelson, they have a ball ground volunteer fire department, and that's funded partially, almost infinitesimally, by the city of Nelson. And Nelson pays a fire tax of $75,000 a year to Cherokee County. Now, that volunteer fire department covers Nelson, but if there's a fire in Riverstone, they will respond because we have these mutual agreements. Yeah. So all the uh, local uh, fire stations, whether it's the Tate Four Way or, or Nelson, they all gather there. They even come up from the Cherokee Fire Station. Yeah, so. I know. I know you've got the you've got the Cherokee County, Pickens County, and all that interface that takes place in Tate and mm -hmm. Ball Ground and Nelson, especially in Nelson. It's just I don't know how they how they laid out that city, but it's really weird. <laughs> it's a beautiful place. It is. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not. I'm just saying it's, <coughs> it's like when I go down through that s turn going down towards Ball Ground, you know, that you just, you've just gone through Nelson. You just went right on by it. I have a question. Yes, sir. Okay, so let's say we could actually reach a consensus in this county that we needed to merge the city and the county. How do we do it? How would we get that done? Uh, the, the, the process in the state of Georgia, you basically, originally you put it on a, a local referendum or on a ballot that you want to move in that direction. Then the plan has to be written and approved by all parties concerned, being the county and all the cities that would be impacted. Don't and then the state as well. you got to do all this locally first. Then once that's approved locally, then it has to be taken by your state representative and state senator and has to be approved down in Atlanta that they'll let you do it. Uh, but, you know, Stephen, kind of to your comment stuff about the area stuff and the white picket fence, that's really not what creating a consolidated government is all about. It, well, it, you know, I want to I want to make that to clarify a little more. It's what's drawing people to those communities that then gives us uh, brings up those questions of well, how are those uh, those emergency services brought to? Um, and if you have if you have a draw, um, whether it be Big Blue or Tate or or Nelson or wherever. Um, you're going to have these conversations more naturally. Right. Uh, so it wasn't, it wasn't to say anything more than that. Yeah. Well, because what you, what you have, and, and I, I use Macon Bibb County as a, a good example, what transpired there is over about a 10-year span, everyone who could leave the city of Macon moved out into the county. They got out from under the thumb, the taxes, the lack of services, that type of thing the city of Macon was offering, which, you know, we're not that different here. There, people who live in the city have issues, but they really don't seem to have a much of a voice. And Macon was the same way. There was a, a, a group of people who ran the city, and they were great with the status quo, and that was all you were going to get. So anybody who could sell their property, even at a loss, moved out in the county, repurchased property, built out there. So the schools started to go down because there wasn't parents involved. The tax base wasn't there for the students. They built three new high schools or three new middle schools out in the county in a major high school south end of the county. Uh, now that they've got the, the, the consolidation has been done, you know, they have a plan for all of the schools and everything countywide. And, you know, they're, they're building in areas that were uh, basically rural that people want to live but the money is, is, is even across the county. So you don't have county schools. Their budget and, and everything was twice what the city was. Well, that's not fair for the kids in the city. But if I'm a teacher and I know I can move to the county school and make 30% increase, I'm leaving the city. Well, I, so. I think uh, even my parents did it. Uh, where they weren't looking at the city or county. They looked towards Atlanta. Uh, they looked north. Um, mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people make that decision. A lot more 
that are bringing that are bringing uh, the uh, tax base back uh, than would be if they were to move out to the county. Um, and those, those that same person um, would make that same decision if they were north of the city or south of the city, north of Atlanta. All right. Um, yep. All right. I think we got enough there. I want to just touch on uh, from a state level, and you know our unemployment levels here uh, in Pickens County right now are at 5.1 percent. But when you look at the state unemployment numbers, uh, my question is: Are they real or are they fiction? Yeah, you know, and it's no different, I think, than the nationwide unemployment numbers. How we take those averages. I found out as I started looking at this, looking at comparing Pickens County of actual people looking for work who had applied and were, were able to find jobs versus not, we still use, the, I'll call it the old format. Which is the most accurate. Which is the most accurate versus the new core co- common core math that uh, <laughs> our, our administration and, and now I find out at our state level that uh, they're using the same thing. If you don't look for a job and you don't apply inside of 181 days, they just stop counting you. So, uh, but uh, I'll go to the right. Jim, what do you think? You got an opinion on the unemployment numbers? I don't believe them. <laughs> yeah. I, I, can make, I can make part-time observations in the neighborhood. I, you know, I've been there, what, 15 years now and I can see the people that I know their car's not leaving the parking their, their driveway anymore yeah. and I equate that I got about a 10% rate in that in that Riverstone yeah he's unemployed yep uh, I don't know how many have quit looking I know a couple have yeah I know I, I retired then went back to work I don't feel guilty about maybe taking a job it was only a part time job anyhow but, <laughs> but it's it's how those numbers should be collected is like they did in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Kentucky never thought that they had an, uh, when I was living there working for a company, they came out with a percentage that said there's 26% unemployment in Bowling Ground, Kentucky. And you know there was, and you know how they figured that out? Mm-hmm. They keep track of everybody who is employed in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Okay. Their city decided we're going to keep an eye on everybody, and when they when they lose their job, we know that because they offer services when you lose your jobs. How many? If I was if I was employed and lost my job today, how many people would volunteer services? I know that there are some available, but there's no volunteering. It's just you're posted as a number. Yeah. So I don't you know. I take the unemployment rate national and state with a grain of salt every time I hear it. It's all politics when you come down to the, especially when Wall Street gets that weekly number. You know, that's, that number has got to be massaged numbers of times. Oh, yeah. It's it's the news wire. So, I don't believe it. Stephen? So, it's a matter of how you calculate. (laughs) And it it comes down to, uh, and and the federal government, all governments use these numbers uh, based on the, the, U, the unemployment numbers, or the, there's uh, six levels, or U, U1 through uh, U6. U6. Um, and basically, I'll, I'll quickly describe the difference between uh, U6 and U3. Uh, U3 being the uh, official uh, unemployment numbers. But the U6 unemployment uh, rate counts not only people without work seeking full time employment, which is what the U3 number is. Uh, but also counts the marginal uh, attached uh, workers uh, and those workers part-time in the, uh, in the economy. So you're talking about your your part-time, your seasonal workers, everything is being compiled. So are you working 40 hours a week or not? If you're not working 40 hours a week, then you fall into the U6 numbers. Okay. Um, and the U6 number stands right now at uh, right around 10%. <laughs> That's that's the number we should have always been working off of. No. Um, that's a more realistic number. Um, and even that may be off just a little bit. Yeah, maybe 4.9%. Um, but <laughs> but I, I think we've got uh, an administration and, uh, well, 
Can't place it on one guy, but you've got an administration that... Uh, well, they started using it right after he was elected. Do what? They started using it that... The U6 right after he was elected. Yeah, it, it just it, it makes sense to be able to say, well, here is, here's the official numbers, and they're not, they're slighted. It's the official, unofficial number. Correct. Uh, but people, I think, need to be looking at U6 numbers as as, a, as an overall... Not U3 uh, numbers. U3, correct. Uh, right. As an overall visual of where we stand currently with the market in unemployment. Yeah. What, now, let me, I, I, I may not have heard you clearly, but... The, what's the U6 number versus the U3 number? The U6 number compiles all No, no, the, what's the actual number? Is that oh, how, it's 10%. U6 is 10%. Okay, okay, I thought that would be the U3 number. Because the, the U3 number, what I report I re read was there's 94 million people are not working. You know, that, that that's the total out well, of the I labor force. how many of the population we have versus the... the 301 the million. So. Well, there's 136 we're, we're million... And the without, labor force is 130 up the U3 number million. itself, I think we stand okay. what it's uh, shy of six percent or something like that. Now the U3 number, anyways, and that's like five point six or something like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, it wasn't not too long ago that uh, this very almost this very same year that we stood at uh, at almost 11. Well, at 11 percent, the year started at 11.3. Uh, and work its way down to where we are today at ten percent. Uh, uh, what I, the number I saw was forty six million that are counted as unemployment. That was the U three number, which that would be the ten. Ten. Yeah, the U six is what the government now uses as five point six, five point eight percent, whatever, since Obama's been in office. If I'm not mistaken, that's what the Department of Labor counts is the U6 number, and not the not, U3. That's not where I just got my numbers, but um, uh, I mean, despite despite what you want to call it, U6 or U3, the number we need to be looking at is the higher the, number. The equation, well, not <laughs> yeah. just the higher number, but the equation that that calculates right. all of those individuals. If you could have an individual that could be a seasonal worker for two or three months, drop out, pick back up in two or three months and get uh, full-time employment, then you can have them drop back down again. You have people that fluctuate in and out of, right. of jobs all the time. Uh, as, as I was talking about not too long ago, I think uh, outside of the radio, is we're heading to a society where you, you're no longer going to be able to work for one particular company for 30 years. You're going to be able to be a contractor and you're going to work for multiple companies. And you're going to collect your checks that way. Um, mm -hmm. And you, the individual, will be reliable for your individual health care. Uh, however you get that, the company XYZ times 15, how many companies you work for, do not care. Yeah. <laughs> so where do, where, do the, the, where do the iron workers and the uh, seasonal construction workers end up in the numbers? They're, if they, they were full-time, full -time, they would still get counted as full-time. Oh, they're not working full-time. They're just they're, they're working about three months, and then they take well, a month yeah, off to another you job. you got to understand, full-time is, is eight hours a day. It doesn't matter how many months. It's how many hours in a day, how many hours in a week. And keep in mind, also, the health care uh, policy, the ACA, just changed the number of hours. So we've gone from actually 40 hours once upon a time. Now we're down to 30 hours full-time. So. Okay, right. uh, I'm looking at the Department of labor's website right now through september the u6 was 10 percent so that's the u3 is going to be the the, the lesser Five. yeah the lesser yeah. okay but yeah. I, yeah. okay well can i i want to simplify this for everybody pretty much the president calls in his advisors calls his advisors he asks his attorney he says attorney what is two plus two he says four it's whatever you want it to be no, that was a statistician, but thanks for blowing the joke there, Bill. Uh, <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> statistician but, of, uh, statistician and, a, uh, and a lawyer walking through a barn. <laughs> That's the first mistake. <laughs> but no, in, in all seriousness, it's the, you know, they can mess with the numbers to make them come up with whatever they want to be. I mean, there's actually college classes called lies, damn lies, <laughs> and statistics. Yeah, I got. That. I passed that class today, by the way. I don't know. For that BS it. degree you got in yeah. poly political science. Yeah. Actually, it's called <laughs> probabilities. You can do Probab anything with numbers. Yeah. Oh, you can. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just that 
that statistics are an awful lot like a bikini. Okay, what they reveal is interesting. What they conceal is absolutely perfect. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. David, anything you want to add after that? No, thank you. <laughs> For the record, I actually got to see that class. Oh, that was, that's that's what I actually <laughs> looking back on it. I, yeah, that was uh, you were banished, sir, for life. All right. All right. Uh, next thing I want to talk about at the uh, the state level is uh, I think I brought up last week on the on the, the show was at the Georgia State Fair down in our in the beautiful city of Perry, uh, the peanut poll at the state state fair events. Um, the uh, they had uh, Brian Kemp, our Secretary of State, had set up mason jars, and you had to use Georgia peanuts and all those Virginia peanuts. And uh, take one and put it into whatever uh, Republican or Democratic candidate you were interested in voting for or undecided. And uh, oddly enough, as the polls uh, as the polls closed out uh, this this week down there, stuff Brian actually sent me a a text message and stuff. So he was heading back toward Athens, and Rubio actually had the the highest number of votes uh, as of the last day of the show. Uh, on the Republican side, but undecided was firmly in third place, which I thought was was kind of interesting. And on the Democratic side, uh, Bernie Sanders was in number in number one place. Uh, number two was Joe Biden, though he didn't stand up behind his his uh, podium. And undecided was number three on the Democratic side. So some some interesting statistics, and I, I think it it goes to to what we've talked about in the past and we keep hearing, a lot of people, other than those of us who enjoy or care about the political uh, direction of this country, there's a whole lot of undecided who are far more worried about their fantasy football league and, uh, you know, if their uh, uh, you know, basketball team or whatever sport is, is going on. Or why they can't find a job for a year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, this is this is a poll. This is a poll taken by peanuts, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, using using peanuts, which I'm I'm good with Charles Schultz pretty much across the board. But uh, yeah, so it's just peanuts. It's just peanuts. Yeah. I heard. I was driving someplace this morning, and I heard on the radio. First of all, first of all, the Fox Network did a peanut poll of the Democratic. Oh, the Democratic debate. Yeah. yeah. They said that Bernie Sanders got 173 of the 200 peanuts that were there. Uh, who was the governor? Uh, uh, Martin, Martin O'Malley. He or got Webb. he got something like 23, and Hillary Clinton got 18. Then you go to MSN and listen to their results of their 200. It's a polar opposite. It's, just, it's, <laughs> it's amazing. When you look at these things, and if you're if you're living in a cave for 20 years, it's startling. But you know, I've got 70 years on this planet, and there's one thing that's consistent: everything you hear on the news and TV is <laughs> that's it. Take it for what it's worth. That's, that's the reason you listen to talk radio Unless in the morning. And, riot someplace. You can yeah. believe that pretty much. That's the reason you have to listen to NPR, BBC, and and uh, talk radio all on the same day. That way, you get the whole story. Because none of the uh, none of the three of them will tell you the whole story. You gotta. This is you the gotta, picture of Dragon Radio. Yeah, we got you got to piece it together. You got to piece. It. That's right. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, NPR's got that show. Almost nothing considered. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all things considered. <laughs> all things considered. Oh, well, excuse me. It was that no one listens. <laughs> no conservative things considered. Yes. So, and uh, or rational things. Considered. It's astounding how that guy can talk with his nose that far in the air. I don't get it. In the air? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's up somewhere else, but we can't talk. This is a family show. I actually like NPR. What are you all talking about? I, I'm getting back on the subject a little bit. <laughs> I like Prairie anybody, Home Companion. Nobody really want to do has, that. Has anybody, has anybody had their person drop out? Oh, yeah. Rick Perry was my guy from the last round, and he was my guy this time, and he, he folded up his tent and went home. Uh, and, so. and are we going to – is this the Trump effect? Is it here to stay? I think it is. Uh, I yes, think it, it has is. to be. Unless yeah. he does something just really. Yeah, he's totally he's pretty much going to have to slap Michelle yeah. Obama. Well, he may pick up votes if he did that. Uh, okay, let's think of something else ridiculous he could do. But you know, really and truly, and I, I heard it said. I think this is the truth. 
that if Donald Trump could get Ben Carson to be his VP, everybody else could go home now. Yep. They could uh, pack it up right they now. They could go home now because you've got bombastic and calm all in the same pa- package. Yeah. So. Well, you know, you, you talk about extremes, and, and, I, and I'll say this, and, and I want to preference it by tonight and actually earlier this week, Stephen Hall and I both made a, attempts. We actually uh, tried to reach out to the Progressive Party here in Pickens County and the Democratic Party here in, in Pickens County via Facebook, email, uh, telephone numbers to try and get either uh, David Robinson, who's uh, chairman of the Progressive Party, or David Robinson, G. David Robinson, or uh, Charles Hendricks from the Democrat Party to attend tonight uh, to let them c- comment. And they get- were at the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. Well, that's it. But I just want to make sure if anybody's listening to this radio show, uh, WYYZ, our, our, our host radio station, that if they know how to get in touch with those two gentlemen, I'd really still like to have them on the show. So the offer is open. The door is open. Please come and join us and offer your, your Mr. opinions. I, your I, I, opinion. I think Mr. Cagle has a direct line to Mr. Hendricks, don't you? <laughs> That's telepathic. That really is. No, oh blocked, no, no, no! He, it was direct. He, he, he blocked me on Facebook. You know, but he, he you know, he. he oh, we're back in high school yeah. again, kids. And it, and it could be that they're on holiday. I'm not sure, but but uh, you know, we know where where they have their meeting set for next month. And Steve and I plan on attending and with open arms and and offer to have them on the show as well as some other things we like to to do for the community. So. You know, let, let everybody offer or, their... Or, or uh, just anyone that has an opposing view, for that matter. Oh, yeah. So they'd be welcome. Yep, absolutely. So if there's any Democrats that are that uh, are, are, libit- are uh, progressives, I always get those confused. Socialists or communists thing. who would like to come on a radio show. How about libertarians? Uh, absolutely. Li- libertarians, absolutely. I think we already have a libertarian here. He's floating back and forth between the, the two. He's not fully oh. decided, but... Uh, Actually, so, I'm looking for that guy from the rent is too damn high party. <laughs> <laughs> he'd be all right. No, he'd be all right. He'd be fun. Yeah, he yeah. would. Absolutely. So we definitely want to open it up to uh, other parties to be on with us. Um, I want to throw it out here on the Democratic debate. I did watch the entire thing start to finish. Uh, God bless you. Had, oh. had a, had a, <laughs> when you talk about people who are not going to be there, the book ends. At that debate, are probably not going to be there much longer. Yeah, yeah. And, and and the thing is, I mean, I, they look, they look, you know, they, they look like a deer in headlights to begin with. Yeah. The the Jim, the, yeah, Jim Webb. I I feel the, sorry for him. Yeah. Because he's actually not a bad. He's probably the most decent one of the bunch. He's yeah. not a bad guy at but all. Lincoln yeah. Shavey. He oh, looked man. like they he look, was about to a, weigh down his legs, man. For a guy, I I had a, a coworker <laughs> tell me he looked like he had. Just pwned it up to the bar and spilt his life story all over the uh, all over the the airways for everybody to see, and then probably said, "Don't just go easy on me." All right. <laughs> well, the, by the way, if anybody says that on either side, they should automatically be disqualified. Yeah. Well, my, my thing is, we definitely live in a democratic republic. When candidates, representative republic, a representative republic, where candidates who are running for the presidency of the United States can be either conscientious objectors or state clearly that they are a socialist slash communist and honeymoon in, in Russia and still be considered for the highest office in this country. And we had those on stage Tuesday night. So, uh, and, and wore those those uh, badges proudly. So it is a brave new world. Let's just hope we can brave it. But, you know, you, you, what does that say about the Democratic Party who most of, I assume, most of the voters that are supporting Sanders are Democrats when they're voting and supporting admitted socialists? It sounds to me that the... When they're supporting an admitted socialist. But see, see, now, what does that say about the it's, Democratic it's not Party? A, it's not a party. It's not a party matter. It, it's a millennial matter. Millennials. No, there's millennials a lot of people. Party, right? There's a lot of people, middle aged and senior citizens, supporting Bernie Sanders. Well, I'd like to see Joe Biden in the race because if the Republicans can't win, I would at least like him to be the one. Absolutely. 
Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Well, with that, I want to thank everybody for being on the show. And again, thank our, our, our host location, Rocco's Pub and Grill, and the radio station of BYYZ. Uh, Craig, last comment. Yes. Last week, I asked you guys to pick up your trash or keep it in your car. This time, I'm going to ask you again, please don't litter our county. Thank you.